Welcome to another insightful session with Informed Investor. While the broader markets are ranging, there is one sector which is leading the recovery. More to say, as there is a rebound in manufacturing activity in major economies like the China and US, there is an inherent surge in the consumption of this very raw material. With the combination of supply chain disruptions and notable increase in global demand, prices of key industrial metals such as steel, copper, aluminium and zinc have been steadily increasing reaching multi-year highs. In this video, we will discuss these base metals which have reached record highs and the surge in the BSE Metal Index. Secondly, we will deep dive into the steel sector and we will talk about the reasons for the surge and the critical role of China's economic strategies which are at play in this scenario. We will then talk about the India story and consumption leading to a surge in demand for steel. Lastly, we will conclude with insights on the metal industry and highlight some key metrics you should follow when looking at metal stocks. Let's begin. You're watching Informed Investor and initiated by Equentis. Before we start, let's give you a clear picture of how the Nifty has performed compared to the BSE Metal Index. The BSE Metal Index, which tracks the performance of companies in the metal, metal products and mining sectors listed on the BSE, serves as a benchmark for investors interested in these industries. If looked at the chart, the BSE Metal Index over the last three months has delivered 18% returns while the Nifty has delivered a mere 2.5% returns. Furthermore, over the past one year, the Metal Index has delivered 67% compared to the 22% the Nifty has witnessed. To start off, the Indian metal sector serves as the backbone of India's industrial and infrastructural growth and therefore is a significant contributor to the country's economy. It plays a vital role in infrastructure development manufacturing and overall industrial growth. And according to KPMG, the primary metal sector in India accounts for about 8.1% of the entire manufacturing segment, forming a vital source for crucial input in materials. To understand the metal sector better, it can be categorized under iron, steel, coal, aluminum and other base metals and lastly precious metals like gold, silver, platinum, etc. In fact, India produces as many as 95 minerals all of which play a key role in the economy. It's pretty obvious that these metals have wide applications in every industry. A few to name are metals are widely used in the construction industry, in electronics, in medicine, in decorative products, in automobiles, machinery and as several other applications. Now you might be wondering how do metal companies make money? To show you with an example, let's look at Tata Steel's process. The core business model starts by extracting metals from mines processing them into usable forms like ingots, sheets, etc. and selling them to various industries like construction, auto and manufacturing. Profit ideally hinges on the efficient extraction process, minimizing cost while maximizing the amount of metal produced and sold. In fact, Tata Steel goes beyond basic steel production. They create higher value products like prefabricated steel structures or specialized metal alloys commanding a premium price due to the additional processing and engineering involved. And that's not it. Sustainability is a growing concern and some metal companies are incorporating metal scrap collection and processing into their business model. This allows them to tap into a readily available source of raw material while promoting environmental responsibility. Now in context, all major metals have been reaching record highs. If you see the charts on the screen, metals like copper, aluminum, zinc, which have multi-purpose applications have surged significantly in recent times on the back of several factors. Moving on, so what are the reasons for the surge in metals? Firstly, the surge in demand for industrial metals is attributed to the resurgence of manufacturing activity in the world's two largest economies, the USA and China. In fact, data also suggests the same. The manufacturing PMI, which reflects manufacturing activity, has shown a notable improvement. In China, the PMI reached its highest level since March of the previous year driven by increased export orders and a surge in factory output. China's PMI came in at 51.4 in April, showing the highest expansion in recent times. Likewise, the US peaked its manufacturing PMI at 52.4 in February. Though it has declined in the last month, it still remains in the expansion zone as then any number above 50 indicates expansion in manufacturing activity in the country. Consequently, Goldman Sachs has revised its outlook for China's economic growth anticipating a stronger expansion than previously estimated. So it's obvious that if China's economy grows, it'll lead to a higher demand for metals 
like steel, copper, zinc, aluminum, which are crucial components in various industrial processes. Second, geopolitical concerns in regions like Southeast Asia and Russia have restrained the supply of certain metals, further driving up prices. In fact, the London Metal Exchange recently banned Russian metal produced on or after April 13 to comply with new US and UK sanctions imposed for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And we know how severe the impact is when geopolitical issues get heated up. Previously, with US-China war, China-Taiwan tensions, Red Sea crisis, ongoing Russia-Ukraine, Israel-Hamas are a few examples which significantly affect the supply chain, thereby leading to a surge in specific commodities. With inflation slowing down in the second half of the year, Morgan Stanley expects the likeliness of rate cuts starting from September of this year. Historically, metal prices have shown an inverse relationship with interest rates. This means that when interest rates go down, metal prices tend to go up. The anticipation of rate cuts and a consequently a potential weakening of the dollar is factored into the current prices of base metals. A weaker dollar generally enhances the appeal of metals, thereby stoking demand. The ongoing shift towards evolving technologies and the rise of sunrise sectors are creating a bonanza for the metals industry. Here's how some key trends are impacting metal demand. The solar boom is driving demand for silicon, for solar panels, copper for, for wiring and rare earth elements for wind turbines. The electric vehicle revolution is creating a surge in demand for lithium for batteries, cobalt for cathodes, nickel for high performance batteries and aluminum for lightweight car bodies. Our appetite for gadget fuels demand for lithium, cobalt, rare earth elements and indium for touchscreens. The rollout of 5G network requires vast amounts of copper for cables and new dimium for magnets in radio equipment. Steel remains king for traditional infrastructure while titanium is increasingly used in high performance construction due to its strength and weight ratio. So what is India's position? Just to list a few facts ahead of you, India is a global force in steel production and is the second largest crude steel producer in the world only behind China. India has the second largest production capacity of aluminum in the world. India has the world's seventh largest reserve base of bauxite. India boasts to be the fourth largest iron ore producer and has the fifth highest reserves of iron ore in the world. India is the second largest coal producer and has the world's fifth largest coal reserve at 361.41 billion tons in fiscal year 22. India is home to 1,319 reporting mines. Production as many as 95 minerals is undertaken in India. So moving on to the growth drivers of the metal industry in India. Firstly, infrastructure boom. India's ambitious infrastructure development plans are a cornerstone for the metal sector's growth. The government's focus on initiatives like national infrastructure pipeline, smart cities, high-speed rail networks and national highways is translating into a surge in demand for steel, the backbone of infrastructure. This increased spending is expected to significantly boost steel consumption, directly impacting not just steel producers, but the entire metal industry. Secondly, India's boom in domestic demand is another critical growth driver. The expansion of the automobile, construction and capital goods sector is creating a significant appetite for metals. With EVs taken by storm, and demand for consumer durables along with construction activities in the country, it is imperative that the metal demand is projected to climb further. The Indian government has emerged as a strong supporter of the metal sector. Policy initiatives like the National Steel Policy 2017, the Production-Linked Incentive Scheme, Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Act of 2021, etc. are providing a much-needed push to modernization, capacity building and technological advancements. Additionally, FDI up to 100% is allowed under the automatic growth. All in all, the rising domestic demand due to the increased activity in the country through infrastructure, construction, manufacturing, power production, along with policy initiatives of the government are all leading to the growth of the metal industry. Now moving on to the metal industry in India. As we mentioned earlier, the metals and mining sector serves as a backbone of India's industrial and infrastructure growth, providing essential raw materials for various industries. The metal industry is divided into two parts, which are ferrous and non-ferrous metals. The major difference between the two is that ferrous metals are those that do not contain iron. So anyway, according to the ICRA, the domestic non-ferrous metal demand is expected to remain healthy at 10% in fiscal year 25. And what needs to be highlighted is the need for steel in the future. 
according to ICIC security research after the impact of covid domestic steel consumption is likely to witness an unprecedented double digit consumption in fiscal 24 while the steel consumption is expected to taper off over the years it is expected to almost double from the current levels up to 2032 now moving on there are few specific metrics that you need to keep in mind while evaluating metal companies we will explain this through an example with respect to JSW steel. First things first, we need to look at the production or volume growth. In the case of JSW steel, it recorded a consistent increase in crude steel production as well as saleable steel sales. Apart from the slight dip in fiscal year 20 and fiscal year 21 due to COVID, it has rebounded and recorded a steel production of 26.43 million tons, an increase of 9% from the previous year. Similarly, even steel sales recorded a jump of 11% to 23.96 million tons. Next is to understand the future plans of the company via cap capacity expansion. Aligning itself to India's growth story, JSW Steel boasts a current capacity of 36.2 million tons with plans to take its capacity to 43.5 million tons by September 2027 and eventually reach a milestone figure crossing the 50 million tons capacity by 2030. Another factor to watch out is for the EBITDA margins, which is a measure that reflects the company's operating efficiency, excluding all non-cash and impact of financing choices. JSW Steel recently has maintained strong EBITDA margins around the 16 to 25% mark over the years. Another factor to keep in mind is the debt levels, and JSW Steel has maintained a healthy debt to equity ratio of 0.93 times in the recently. In fact, the stated cap mentioned by the company is 1.75 times but achieving a debt to equity ratio of 0.93 times is certainly commendable. JSW Steel has also taken some bold measures related to emission, waste management and resource use. While the broader goal of India is to achieve net zero emissions by 2070, which means cutting carbon emissions drastically to minimal or zero levels, JSW Steel is targeting net zero emissions by 2050, as you can see on the screen. Apart from that, they also plan to transition to renewable power to fuel their operations. While these are few specific indicators we spoke about, there are broader fundamentals that you can look like for those of return on capital employed, top line and bottom line growth, profit levels, capital expenditures in the future, cash flows, market share, so on and so forth. In conclusion, the Indian metal sector remains a cornerstone of the nation's industrial and infrastructure development showcasing robust growth driven by rising domestic demand and improvement in the global outlook. Aligning to India's growth story, the metal sector is bound to and holds potential for future growth. While the cyclical nature of the steel business and environmental concerns pose challenges, addressing these through cost management, environmental stewardship and technological advancements will be critical for sustaining long-term success. Overall, the Indian metals industry is poised for a promising future, contributing significantly to the country's economic progress and global competitiveness. Having said that, this is me, Ralston, signing off. Have a great day and stay safe. Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.